Classic Rock Radio. I'm Marilyn Michaels and you're listening to Classic Rock Radio. Very pleased to say we'll have Brian May joining us very shortly. He'll be talking to us about what he's doing to help save Britain's badgers. You may have seen all the news lately. And he'll also be talking to us about his appearance at last month's Sunflower Jam and some other things as well. Keep it here, Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. I'm Marilyn Michaels, and you're listening to Classic Rock Radio. I have a very special guest today on the line, whom you will have seen much of lately on TV, in the papers, and on Twitter and Facebook. Now, to just call him the legendary Queen guitarist and astrophysicist, uh, I can't speak today, astrophysicist <laughs> is probably an understatement. So a big warm welcome to the multi-talented Dr. Brian May. Very kind of you. Lovely, glowing introduction. Sorry, I was being a rock star, wasn't I? Being late. Not at all, it's <laughs> fine. That's what happens when you're up late tweeting, hey? I'm afraid so. Are you a tweeter then? You must be. I am, yeah. Radio Girl Prods. That's that's oh, my one, yeah. I'll um, have to have a look for you. I know it's an extremely busy time for you, and one of the many things keeping you busy is this campaign that you've started against the dreadful woodland genocide that Britain's badgers are threatened with. Can you bring us up to speed with what's, what the current situation is? Well, we live on a knife edge, really. Um, I don't think there's a day go by, day goes by when something doesn't happen that makes us think, oh, my God, they're about to choose him. We're right on the, the precipice at the moment. Um, they've had people trained to shoot for weeks. They've had people out there putting peanuts down. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, if it wasn't so tragic, it would be laughable, really. Uh, because there are people who are just desperate to kill these animals, mm. no matter what the evidence is against the fact that it'll do any good. Um, and that's very difficult to deal with. It's a little bit like dealing with the fox hunting situation, because you have people who, who really will never change their minds. And there is a link. I have to say there is definitely a link between the, the business of, of culling badgers and the business of trying to return to blood sports. They're very much um, sort of interlocking issues, which is why the battle is so hard to save animals these days. I think you're right when you say about the link and huh, not to sort of like divide and, you know, to draw divisions between people, but we are in a class society where we like it or not. And let's face it, um, the lot of the toffs do like these blood sports. They do. You know, if, if we'd been speaking a couple of years ago, I probably would have said, oh, it's nonsense. There's no such thing as class in England anymore. But I've found over the last couple of years that there definitely is, and it's very, very powerful. Mm. And it sounds quite innocent <laughs> you first mention it, but in fact, class means that there are certain people who believe they have a kind of divine right to do anything they want, to abuse people, to abuse, actually, children, to abuse... Um, animals and they are linked yeah. and if you talk to the FBI in America you'll you'll get very clear confirmation of that if they want to find someone who's been violent against been violent against a human being in a particular crime they will go to their register of animal abusers yes. to find uh, to help them on their way yeah. um, so it, you know this has been a real journey for me I, I thought in the beginning you could persuade people and you could make people see the light but actually Sadly, it continues to be a war on people who really don't understand the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when people like you and people like me and others speak out, we get called um, bunny huggers. <laughs> we do indeed. We get called, well, well, I get called a lot worse than that these days. That's one of the things that I've encountered, of course, because making music, the worst thing that I encountered over the years is people saying that I was rubbish. Oh. which I got used to. But now I'm used to people calling me all kinds of names and, you know, including a liar and... Uh, yeah. yeah funny hugger is one of the nicer things, really. Uh, <laughs> I don't really care anymore. I mm. realise that if you stand up for something that is good, you are going to make enemies, and that's what I've become accustomed to. Um, I don't go out of my way to make, men to make enemies. Um, I try to be reasonable and not go off the deep end of people. But in the end, there will be that element to it. 
Yes, yeah. But if, if people are, are taking that attitude, it shows you're getting somewhere and you're hitting nerves, which is a, which is a good thing. I thought you kept your, I thought you kept your cool brilliantly on the Alan Titchmark show when, when the farmer did sort of like call you a liar. And, you know, I'm sure there were many people shouting at the TV. I was one of them. known as the yelling farmer um it's strange that whole thing yeah i came off obviously feeling um not very good really, mm, because mm. You, you feel like you've been sort of trampled on by someone yes but i there was a point in the program where i thought do i get up and fight in the sense you know do i do some trampling back and something inside me just said no let him have his head and let him you know give him enough rope to hang himself which i think probably he did but I, th I think so. Yeah, he has a passion, but you mm. know, unfortunately, in the wrong direction. That that is the problem because passions are running high on this in both directions. Um, and I understand yeah. there's a lot of farmers who are totally against this coal of badgers. Um, it's it's been so unfair that the badgers have got the blame for bovine t TB. It's it's not coal badger TB as as you've pointed out and others have pointed out. And to me, I mean, I'm okay. I'm not a scientist. I, you know, I can't sit and study all these papers and and glean the light from it. But what I do feel is, I don't think enough research has been done. I do think vaccination is the way to go. It's possible this has been spread by something else. I mean, when a, a horse fly bites a horse, it's passing something on. So you know. Well, you know, it's strange you should mention that. In the midst of all this, I have seen. Um, reports which are anecdotal I have to say but nevertheless reports of some evidence that flies may carry the, the disease which just makes nonsense of everything of course and mm -hmm. it, what's, what's most shocking is that people haven't checked these things out. I mean, we've killed 11,000 badgers in an experiment to see if badgers are part of the problem mm -hmm. and the conclusion of the people who did that experiment was that killing badgers can make no meaningful contribution to the control of bovine TB in cows. You see, I know it off by heart by now because mm -hmm. it's become such a kind of mantra. The yeah. science has been done on badgers. There is no question. There's no need to be doing experiments. The science has been done and the conclusion was that culling badgers isn't going to solve the problem. And yet, we have a government and an NFU who have been hell-bent on pushing this through. Um, and you have to start wondering why, because there is, I, I don't know why it was down to me, you know, I'm a rock star, you know, people perhaps rightly lay into me and say, what the hell do you know about it? Well, what I know about it is what I've learned over the last two years, and I'm not a farmer, but I have now met a lot of farmers, I've been to their farms, and what I have is that I, I'm a scientist, so I can read mm -hmm. the papers and I can understand them. Yeah. And... Um, what I'm, I suppose I'm trying to persuade farmers is that, yes, be angry. You're right to be angry, but you're being angry with the wrong creature. You're being angry with a badger. You should actually be angry with DEFRA yeah. and the government who have been really neglecting you for many, many years. I would say about 30 years. And it's really just the badger that's been the fall guy here. We'll break for a track and we'll be back with Brian May after this. You're listening to Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. That was Brian May's Back to the Light. I'm Marilyn Michaels, and you're listening to Classic Rock Radio. If you just joined us, my guest today is Brian May from Queen, and we are discussing the awful situation about the proposed badger call. Do you think it's possible that the reason people are sort of like trying to halt the, the vaccination idea is because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm vegetarian, you're vegetarian. Is it because vaccinating cows would just be a constant money swallowing thing because it's cow conveyor belt, isn't it? Yes, I mean, it's very odd. You know, we are accused of being bunny huggers. And we're accused of having emotional arguments because they're very unsweet and cute or whatever. But the strange thing is that as it's developed, we have become much more reliant on the science to prove our case. And the science mm. is completely with us. And the the other side, the pro coal people, have become very emotional. And they start talking about the distress and, 
And, you know, how can we possibly be spending this amount of money? Well, the money that is being spent is our money. It's the taxpayers' money. And we have been funding the farmers for many, many years, compensating them for loss of cattle when they continue to do the same thing, which is bring cattle up in known TV hotspots. So there's a terrible illogicality to that. We are actually funding this continued wrongdoing. And, um, of course, they're crying, something has to be done, something has to be done. Well, for God's sake, something does have to be done. But culling has been shown not to work. So the new element is vaccination. And government, for years and years, should have been going after this. This is what should have been the Holy Grail. People should have been in Europe knocking on doors constantly. And as far as I can see... Nobody has tried hard enough, that's my conclusion, because we went, as you probably know, we went, you know, I went with the head of the RSPCA to Europe, and we got fantastic response. We got really open arms and people bending over backwards to help, um, with actually a very poor view of the way that, that governments have, have run farming over the years. Yes, yeah, so I, I read... Mean, British, British, British governments. Mm-hmm. And I read the piece in the Sunday um, the Sunday Mail yesterday, um, which basically um, made a mockery of everything that was it. Owen Patterson said to you. Well, yeah. God, it's inescapable. I don't. I mean, there's a man I don't understand, and I don't mm. suppose I can ever really have a mm. um, proper conversation with this man because he's absolutely obsessed with the idea of this kill, this coal, and. Um, Certain people you just don't get anywhere with. You know, I think he has a lot of vested interest in, in the sense that there's an emotional um, vested interest. And, um, and he's connected with people who have other vested interests. You know, this is, this is very much um, a view which is supported by the hunting, fishing and shooting community. community. Mm. They can't afford to lose this little bat, if you can call it that, you know, in the midst of a massive war. Because if they lose this battle, it would mean that Britain actually does care about an individual animal, does, does think an animal has feelings and has a worth, mm. which would really blow hunting and, you know, particularly fox hunting and stag hunting, hare coursing, all these really despicable so-called sports, it would blow all of that out of the water. Yeah. And that, folks, is what we really need to do because we're in the dark ages still. Absolutely. But you haven't just sat back. You have done something and you've done a lot. I mean, the, your petition, um, your government petition has had over 160,000 signatures in just a short few weeks. And now there's going to be this uh, debate on the 25th of October with MPs having to, to now debate it. Congrats. Yes, indeed. I can hardly believe I'm saying that. I never would have thought we'd have got this far, to be honest. What can people still do? about this? I know you, you're asking for people to contact their MPs. What else can people do? Yes, in this next couple of days, it would be great if you contacted your MP if you feel strongly about this and say that you're disgusted with the fact that the government is still proceeding with the car, um, especially as there's debate on the way. It's quite incredible, actually, that a government can still be pushing something ahead when it's about to be debated in Parliament. It shows a complete contempt for for Parliament and the parliamentary process and for the people. Um, there was a poll, actually, in, in the Daily Telegraph of, of all papers uh, in which they asked if people were in favour of the car and 83% were against. Now, that shows something, you know, you're talking about the most um, Tory in science paper in the country and um, I, I think it shows that that Tories are actually ashamed of the way that the Tory party is, is behaving at the top level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very significant. I'm completely apolitical myself. I, I, you know, I'm, it's really nobody's business how I vote. And yeah. who, who knows whether I will after this. <laughs> the only party that I'm interested in is, is the voice of the animals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I, I have so many good people on our side, so many of them are farmers, so many of them are conservatives and of course you know, the rest of the country is kind of almost by definition on our side mm. so there is no reason why we shouldn't win this but like, you still have a few people at the top who are desperate desperate to push this awful bloody coal through 
It's a badger holocaust, isn't it? It, it will be mm. if it happens. And every day I get up dreading that I'm going to hear the news that they've started. But they're, they're all ready to go. They're all there in the woods, ready with their guns. These are high-powered machines. These are high-powered rifles, and the bullets can travel for a mile. I mean, mm. you're, you're talking serious armoury here. Mm. And, of course, this is not science-led. This is led on the ground by consortium of, uh, of farmers who are egged on by the government. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm dying to see a change. You know, I feel a change in the wind, but I'm dying to see that it, that it will actually work. I believe that most farmers are reasonable people. Mm. Most of them will realise that the way forward is vaccination. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's almost a no-brainer. When I mean, I talk to a lot of people, and um, they start off very angry usually and with the attitude, like, what the hell do you think you're doing? But by the end of the conversation, they're going, well, if you're right, and vaccination isn't as far away as we've been told, then uh, this is what we have to do. It's a no-brainer. I mean, if your kids were dying of some terrible disease, uh, which was rife in, in children and in, say, some other kind of creature, you wouldn't go out murdering other creatures. You would vaccinate your child. That's the first thing you would do. Absolutely. And it's actually scandalous that we're not vaccinating our cows. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and everything crossed that um, all this hard work you have put into it and your colleagues at Team Badger will have some fruition. Um, I think it's actually important that people do still keep signing that petition uh, because it is another way of being heard. It is. It's a barometer. And the fact that it keeps rising is very significant. Um, yes, please do keep going to teambadger.org and sign the petition. Of course, you can't sign it more than once. That's the strange thing. It's amazing how it's growing. I, I, I'm actually incredibly impressed the way people keep coming. Um, I guess it's people telling friends it's, it's a gradual awareness spreading throughout the whole country. I never would have dreamt we would have got this far. It's become a major issue mm -hmm. in the country. And, and actually, so it should, because this is part of a very big picture, which is the way that we treat our fellow creatures on this planet. Absolutely. And I believe it's time to make a stand. Absolutely, and we're, we're backing you all the way here. Thank um, you. Thank you. We'll break for a track, and we'll be back with Brian May after this. An aptly named track, Save Me. You're listening to Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. It started off so well. Classic Rock Radio. I'm Marilyn Michaels, and you're listening to Classic Rock Radio. If you just joined us, my guest today is Brian May. Last month, I saw you helping to rock everyone's socks off at London's Albert Hall with the Sunflower Jam, which, of course, is another yeah. important cause. It was a night of absolute musical brilliance. How was it for you? It was great. It, I love that kind of thing because... It reaffirms the fact that music actually can be live and dangerous, and it, to me, that's that's where great things happen. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's very different, you know. I don't want to slag things off, you know. <laughs> hard to avoid negativity if you're push, if you're pushing positivity, but mm -hmm. things have become so formalised. You know, all these big events this year. You know, you look at the Jubilee, the the opening and the closing of the, of the Olympics. They're mainly um, a kind of mechanised karaoke event. They're not right. live people with live instruments playing to you anymore. It's all pre-recorded, well, almost all. You know, so it, it, these big, these huge events have lost their spontaneity and their reality. But if, an event like California, like um, I keep calling it California Jam, <laughs> <laughs> an event like Sunflower Jam, really puts people together. Real musicians who have put a bit of work in, but basically are prepared to go out and and perform without a, safe, a safety. Yeah. And to me, that's great. That's where I came in. That's what music's about to me. Live music is about reality. And, and that's making some mistakes because you're living on the edge. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and everybody looked like they were having a fantastic time. You know, not just the audience, but everybody on stage. Everybody looked so everybody looked so happy backstage afterwards as well. Stood next to you in the in the corridor. You you looked like you'd had a lovely time. I loved it. I really did love it. And of course, you're standing next to people who you have a great feeling for. You know, it, it's that's the great bonus of doing what I do. You get to work with people of whom you are a fan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a kind of great perk. You know, I, I loved working with Alice. You know, I, I, I've done it a little before, but that particular moment with Alice Cooper mm. was quite important for me. I, I had a new feeling for the way that I could interact with him. And it was quite, it was almost scary. You know, I could feel a great connection and there were a few great moments there, I think. So, you know, th- those, those things are really precious. Yes, very much so. And of course, it was for such a fantastic cause, you know, with the, the funds going to yeah. holistic care for mm. people with cancer. Yes. And the, the Big C Choir, absolutely brilliant, and had the time of their lives, didn't they? Yeah, that was great. And of course, I had Carrie there, which is another great thing in my life. You know, I, I'm working with this lady who has the most incredible voice, and she's, she's kind of different from most of the divas out there. She doesn't screw around with a song. She sings it from the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I've become very um, stimulated by working on songs and stripping them down to their basics and trying to just um, work with the essence of the song, the inner meaning of it. So we've been doing a lot of this acoustic work, and I love it. I, I love big, I love huge, loud guitars and massive orchestras, but I also love this business of embracing a song at its core and that's what we'll be doing when we go out next month we're doing a few acoustic dates and um, so i'll be exploring that completely in its purest form with with Kerry. and she's an amazing artist lovely and i saw her in we will rock you and and i'd forgotten that it was her until um yeah. until later in that show when when you guys did uh, since you've been gone love since you've been gone I was loving it. It was the first time I'd seen many of the people appearing, you know, live on stage, and I just had a magnificent, magnificent, unforgettable time. Um, uh, and you've got, you've got the, the Born Free stuff happening as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've got to mention Ian Pace before we leave that subject, mm-hmm. because that was a thrill as well, because I've never, ever played with Ian Pace. Oh, wow. The legendary, the legendary drummer of, of Deep Purple, of course. And there's certain things which just, send chills up your spine but um, it was we played uh, Black Knight on my insistence really because everyone went no people have heard it and I went no 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 yeah. people want to hear that <laughs> so we did and, I, and it was with Ian and Ian those those fabulous tight bass drum breaks um, with, and playing with them was just a total thrill for me you know, right, it's right. Something you don't, not, not many kids get to have that had experience, but this kid he really enjoyed it. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> he was very excited about it as well because I interviewed him a, f- a few weeks before, yeah. and and he was mentioning he, how much he was looking forward to to jamming with you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. And Born Free. Born Free. Well, Born Free is actually the parallel project to my own project here, which we call Save Me. We are concerned with trying to decent deal for wild animals in Britain. And Paul Free has been doing that in a very big way for wild animals all around the world. So I've become very close to Virginia Ken- McKenna. Mm-hmm. And her amazing son, Will Travers, who really have been campaigning for wild animals in the wild. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help out on in that in that one or any of the, Thank you know. You. Yes, please do. Um, yeah, well, the tour that we're doing, of course, will be... Um, all about Born Free. It's about, it's about awareness for animals in general. And um, we are working, Terry and I, on the Year of the Lion in, in South Africa, in Cape Town. Um, and the tour will be linked into that. We hope to save the lion because, my God, there may not be lions for very much longer unless we really do something quick. Yeah, it is awful. Um, I actually spend a lot of time out there and I'm really mm. concerned about the, the canned hunting situation, you know, where oh. they're. Hand, hand rearing lions, getting the public to cuddle lion cubs, and then you know the lions get too big, and hey, let's drug them, and somebody can pay a heap of money to shoot them. Disgusting. What a despicable, yeah. despicable trade, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the world that we still live in. It's yeah. got to change. Yeah, it's all about greed. That's what it comes down to. Sadly, it's greed. Greed and and the horrible cruelty, which seems to be a kind of addiction in in some people. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's like the rhino horn situation, isn't it? Uh, it's an almost irretrievable situation now, and it's, of course that's linked into, into crime. Yeah, there's crime connected with this, and of course there's this sadly mistaken belief in the Orient that uh, rhino horn has some special magical property, but basically it's the same as a fingernail. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's very, very sad. You know, the rhinos are just being wiped out, and I, I don't even know if there's any way out. I spent some time out there as well, seeing if I could help, and, you know, I'm afraid everyone just is in despair. I think so. But we've all got to keep fighting it, haven't we? Yeah. We'll break for a track, and we'll be back with Brian May after this. You're listening to Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. I'm Marilyn Michaels, and you're listening to Classic Rock Radio. That was a Brian May track, Resurrection. If you just joined us, my guest today is Brian May. Brian, you've you've achieved so much during your career in in so many different different ways. But are there still some mountains you want to climb, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, I suppose it probably gets boring, you know. But as far as I'm concerned, the human race is 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 in question. You know, to me. Our place in the universe is in question because we haven't learned to deal with creation. We haven't learned to deal with the rest of the species on this planet in a decent way. And to me, that threatened our, our very reason for existence. So to me, you know, perhaps it seems boring going on about badgers, but to me, this is a very central, central issue now. It, it's, it's not just badgers. It's, it's all the wild animals and it's all the animals that we breed because we want to exploit them in various different ways. We are making such a mess and we are being so discompassionate mm. that I would like to see that change. That's the mountain I would like to climb. And that's a mountain I'd love to climb with you. Thank you. Let's do it. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. It's not boring at all. It's it's so very important because if you haven't got respect for, for life, what what is there? Yeah. So... Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw, did you see um, that program on the rise of capitalism last night with Andrew Marr? I didn't know. I was at the Hazel O'Connor show. <laughs> and she said, by the way, she's so pleased with what you're doing to help oh, these wow, badgers, to help if she can. She wants to sign the petition, but she's an Irish resident. <laughs> She did say to say a big hi to you, and she really... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. One last question, Brian, then I'm going to let you go, as I know you're so incredibly busy with your schedule. I understand there's going to be a Freddy film. Yes, indeed. It's been, uh, it's been on the cooker for a few months now. Yeah, well, actually, about a, I suppose about a year since we actually pressed the button. It looks like we'll be filming in early spring, and it'll, the film will, should be out early... 2014. Fantastic. Brian, thank you so much for your time today and let us know if there's anything else we can do to help. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Fight the good fight. <laughs> you too. I hope it all goes well. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. What an absolutely lovely man to speak with and I'm so glad that he is so determined to fight against the Badger Coal. And we can all do our bit. There's still a couple of days before the uh, MPs debate this on Thursday, October the 25th. So please email your MP, call your MP, fax your MP, stop him in the street, but get your MP to stay, debate and vote on this. Let's save Britain's Badgers. I'll leave you now with one more track. You're listening to Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio. Classic Rock Radio.